Uh, this is part two of Illinois, an American frontier to an American state. I'll be dealing with the territorial phase today. When news reached Virginia of Clark's success, the new state declared Illinois a county of Virginia. However, this distant, sparsely settled wilderness was too difficult for the new state to govern. Virginia in 1784 ceded the county of Illinois to the federal government. Other states, such as New York, which also claimed Illinois, did the same. Now Congress was faced with the task of integrating the new area into the United States. In 1785, Congress passed the Land Ordinance Act, which set up a system for surveying the territory. And here's uh, an image that gives you an idea of how they were breaking up this land for public sale. The, the, the Congress also, a couple years later, passed the Northwest Ordinance of 1787, and this provided a plan for governing the territory. And this was a territory that was most under uh, pressure for settlement by Americans crossing the Appalachian Mountains. It went back a number of years, all the way back to the, um, to the French and Indian War. And so there needed to be a plan now, how are you going to govern this territory? So the ordinance stipulated that not less than three or more than five states should be created from the 265 uh, uh, thousand square plus square miles that comprise the Northwest Territory. The governor of the territory was Arthur St. Clair. He resided in the first state of the territory, Ohio, in 1788. Uh, St. Clair visited Illinois in 1790. He reached Kaskaskia in March, and within a few weeks, he created the first county in what would become eventually Illinois, and he named it after himself. Here's a map of some early, the early, the earliest counties in Illinois. Uh, he appointed his cousin, William St. Clair, uh, a clerk, uh, clerk, clerk of the new, of the new county. Now, the issue of slavery was something that was important uh, early on for settlers and for Congress. Some members of Congress were concerned that if slavery was not prohibited, New Englanders and residents of other states that had moved to abolish slavery following the revolution would not uh, head west. Uh, Southerners were also concerned that if allowing slavery in these new states or possibly new states, that could mean competition for their plantations. So slavery was forbidden from these territories in the Northwest. However, slaves lived in Illinois and slave owners did not want to lose their property. So Governor St. Clair tried to appease the slave owners by misinterpreting the article in the ordinance that referred to slavery. He told them that it meant that no new slaves would be brought into the territory, but slaves already there were in no way affected. Now, the Indians of Illinois and the, Pacific, uh, the Northwest Territory in general were being overwhelmed by settlers making their way to the region, especially along the Ohio River Valley. They tried to raid isolated white villages to stem the flow. Although the federal government required settlers and traders and trappers to abide by the Trade Intercourse Act of 1790, which tried to regulate trade and land acquisition from the Indian peoples, whites tended to ignore the act. They took land and then attacked Indians when they refused to cede their lands. Eventually, the Indians of the region formed into a large confederation. The Shawnees, Delawares, Kickapoos, Miamis, and other smaller tribes coalesced under the leadership of Little Turtle. So with the fall of 1791, Little Tur Turtle lured federal troops under the command of General uh, Josiah Harmon into the Confederate stronghold in Ohio and badly mauled them. This is a map that gives you some more of these conflicts are going to be during this time period, and then later when we get to the, uh, the, uh, the War of 1812. Uh, in, November of, uh, in November, Governor St. Clair, uh, he uh, raised his own army and, and launched it against the Confederacy, and he lost 900 men in that, both killed and wounded. And this was the worst military attack in U uh, defeat in U.S. history against uh, American Indians. Little Turtle, though, was not able to hold his Confederacy together for long. There was a new commander, General Anthony Wayne, who was much more professional than the disgraced St. Clair. He put together an efficient fighting force over the course of 1792 to 1794. And in 1794, at the Battle of Fallen Timbers, the Indian Confederacy was defeated. And you can see where the Battle of Fallen Timbers was, and that's in present-day northwestern uh, Ohio. Following that battle was the Treaty of Grenville. And I'll put up the overhead today. So you can see that. So the Treaty of Grenville. So this is a complex treaty because the large number of tribes involved. However, what it did was to restate the validity of previous land sessions. Uh, the U.S. also received additional land in Illinois, land along the uh, Chicago and Illinois rivers, 
uh, land near Fort Peoria and Fort Massac, and other acreage went to the U.S. government. The Indians retained the right to hunt on ceded land and ex expel squatters from their lands. Individual tribes also received certain annuities uh, from this treaty. Now, according to the Northwest Ordinance, a territory could be organized, could organize its own general assembly as soon as it had a population of 5,000 free white males 21 years or older. At that point, it could also elect one delegate to the U.S. Congress, and when the Northwest Territory reached that point, voters chose Indian fighter William Henry Harrison to represent them in Washington. Uh, through Harrison's efforts, a bill creating the Territory of Indiana was passed in, in the Congress in 1800. The Indiana Territory included all the Northwest, Northwest Territory, uh, except for the portion that became the state of Ohio in 1803. I have a map here. I don't really have one that, that tells you um, when the Indian, Indiana Territory controlled all the land. But if you look at on this map with Indiana Territory, Michigan Territory, and Illinois Territory, this at all one time was Indiana Territory, and then Ohio, beca when Ohio became a state in 03. So Harrison became governor of the new Indiana Territory, and Vincennes became its capital. However, Illinois settlers uh, were not satisfied with being part of Indiana and wanted to separate into their own state. Part of that dissatisfaction had to do with the issue of slavery. There was a wealthy faction of wealthy men who wanted to repeal the 1787 ordinance prohib uh, prohibition on slavery. They argued that labor was scarce in Illinois and that slaves would uh, could solve that problem. And so this was this coalition was led by William Morris Morrison, who was a leading merchant in Kaskaskia, and John Edgar. Uh, they led this fight, uh, probably to to appease some of these. Uh, folks out in, in Illinois, Congress passed a referendum that allowed for indentured servitude to exist in the territory, and I'll get to indentured servitude later, but it's basically another word for slavery. After nine years of trying, those who wanted a separation from Indiana found a way to accomplish their goal. They agreed to elect Jesse B. Thomas as the delegate to Congress from the territory. In turn, Thomas pledged to work for the enactment of a law that would allow Illinois to become a separate territory. He won the election and made good on his promise. The law creating the Illinois Territory went into effect March 1st, 1809, and Kaskaskia was named as a territorial capital. So here we have now what Illinois Territory was at that point, which also included, obviously, uh, Wisconsin. President uh, James Madison appointed Ninian Edwards. And I put him up on the slides here. Ninian Edwards, and there's an image of him. So he's of Kentucky. He became governor of the new territory. Edwards uh, met with the territorial judges and worked out a legal code for the new territory, adap adapting most of the 38 laws in it from the laws of the Indiana Territory. In the next few years, Congress remedied the two important complaints of Illinois voters. One, uh, the Northwest Ordinance stated that settlers had to be landowners uh, in order to be able to vote. The problem with that is only 222 uh, people living in Illinois Territory actually owned the land they were living on. So Congress agreed to drop that land ownership requirement. The other complaint was that families who had been living in the frontier for a number of years could not be sure that the land they, they cleared would someday be theirs. The federal government had not finished surveying the land and setting up land offices in which people could then buy acreage. So these, uh, and their fear was that newcomers would end up taking that land that folks had already been living on and clearing and, and settling. And so essentially what the government decided to do, the Congress, was to pass a preemptive law to give squatters the first chance to buy the land they were living on. Indian troubles broke out uh, before the War of 1812. Now Tecumseh, he was a Shawnee chief and his brother the Prophet, formed another coalition of Indian peoples to oppose the invasion of American settles into their traditional lands. They advised their followers not to cede or sell any more land to the Americans. They were also adv advised them to, to return to their traditional ways and cast off all American and European material culture. Harassment of white settlers in Southern Illinois that had been going on infrequently for years continued and coincided, coincided with the building of this coalition. Tecumseh gathered an army at the encampment of Tibby Canoe River in um, Indiana for a massive battle. However, that, that um,
So the Battle of Tippecanoe takes place in 1811, where Harrison launched a preemptive attack and he wiped out that coalition. Now, all the, in, although the Illini tribes were no longer a threat, there were other tribes that had come uh, to settle Illinois, such as the Kickapoo, the Potawatomi, saying that correctly, uh, the, the Winnebago, and, uh, and they far outnumbered the settlers. So there was far more Native Americans in Illinois territory than there were white settlers. Had Tecumseh succeeded uh, in terms of being unite all of these Indians together, they might have been able to make some meaningful deals uh, with encroaching whites into Illinois territory. Instead, the small bands basically harassed the settler, settlers, and in some desperate circumstances, they struck with little warning, and they would they would basically kill and uh, men, women, and children and steal horses and other goods. So there was a great deal of conflict out there uh, and violence in the Illinois Territory. Uh, the violence increased to such a point in 1811 that Congress assigned four companies of mounted rangers to Illinois. Governor Edwards constructed Fort Russell near Edwardsville, which is also close to um, Cahokia, and, and had uh, small blockhouses built along the line of settlement so that people had a place to go to for safety. Further north, uh, Peoria's Fort Clark was rebuilt. 60 soldiers were stationed at Fort Dearborn on the site of present-day Chicago. They were put on alert. The War of 1812, though, had more to do with issues regarding trade on the high seas than issues on the frontier. Still, Illinois was important to the war. The British in Canada wanted a buffer between their colony and the new American nation. Therefore, they made alliances with Indians and encouraged them to attack American settlements. Early in the war, the U.S. did very badly. Uh, the American commander at, at Detroit sent word to a subordinate at Fort Dearborn, a Captain uh, Nathaniel Eald. Let me put up the, the outline again here. So the commander, he wanted him to be able to, wanted him to evacuate the fort. Uh, John Kinsey, he was a fur trader and silversmith who had a good relationship with the Native Americans and had a trading post near the fort. He urged Eald to stay in the fort and wait for reinforcements. Eald thought that he should obey his orders, but he did hesitate. Uh, Kinsey told him that if you want to leave, you should leave so immediately before the Indians would attack. It took Hild a few days uh, to make up his mind. He finally decided to leave the fort on August 15, 1812. The Indians initially allowed them to leave the fort, but then attacked once they were outside of it. Uh, Kinsey and his family were spared, but 60 men, women, and children were killed. Several women and children were taken captive. This became the, the great uh, Fort Dearborn massacre, and I do have an image of that. And for years after this event, fear of Indians made some Illinois settlers retreat to more densely populated areas. Immigration in the territory basically stopped. Land sales fell off. But for a time, uh, the War of 1812, by the time it ended, Indians had suffered so many defeats that their and their alliance with the British had not really uh, helped them stem the tide of white settlement. And their isolated raids basically came to an end as you as we get to 1814, 1815. And within a few years, the Illinois frontier was bustling with activity again. Getting uh, settlers out to Illinois was an important uh, development for the territory. Most tracts went to two dollars, went for two dollars an acre, though some areas that have higher prices. Uh, but you had to buy an entire section initially. Congress uh, had the minimum amount of land so the person could buy a territory of 160 acres and then uh, cut it again in 1817 to 80 acres. Uh, with a 5% down payment, you could hold the land for 40 days and 20% uh, then was due. The balance was payable in three installments without interest. Uh, and if you were delinquent after five years, the land went back to the federal government. But this was a way to try to get uh, small uh, farmers out into this region and try to circumvent the large uh, uh, land uh, companies that were buying up so much of this land and then turning around and selling it for a profit. They wanted to make sure that individuals could go out and buy that land and not have to go through a middleman. Congress also reserved a big triangle of land for veterans of the War of 1812. And so this is the military tract. So Governor Edward, Edwards and other officials negotiated with the Indians to cede to white ownership this vast uh, territory. It covered a half million acres and time was organized into 14 counties and parts of four others. Each veteran of the War of 1812 was granted 100, 160 acres of land in this, in this uh, tract. However, most veterans chose uh, to sell their land to land speculators rather than head off to the frontier. Some land speculators purchased uh, acreage for as little as 10 cents an acre. 